friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp. We're getting started with a brand new chapter, which is chapter two, to talk about the software development lifecycle. And as a part of this tutorial, we'll be stepping into the very first segment of it, which is 2.1, traditional development models. As a part of this particular tutorial, we'll be trying to understand that what are the diff traditional models available and why the thing is like it's getting out of context and why other models like Agile are trending and what is the major uh, differentiation between the traditional and the Agile methodology. In order to understand the same, we will be getting started with some of the development models which are from traditional times and first trying to understand that what exactly was the nature of these traditional models. And to talk about that, we'll be first getting started today with waterfall model. In order to understand what is waterfall model, here is a small picturization which tells you the different phases or the standard phases of the waterfall model. Most important thing, it is a very generalized process as it moves from one stage to another stage and does not have a provision to go back to the previous stage. That's the reason it was called as waterfall model. Now the nature of the waterfall certainly tells you that it is one way to flow down but does not have a provision to come back. Now there were customers in the traditional days who had the requirements well defined and frozen. Now of course given that the requirements were frozen, we used to gather initially in the first phase by interacting with the business. There were a lot of other activities which used to happen. The person responsible at this stage was the business analyst and the business analyst used to interact with the customer in order to collect all the necessary information about what exactly the product is and then start converting them into the technical specifications which we used to call it as the software requirement specification. Once the requirements were well defined it was important for the uh, testing team to come and look at it kind of review it and say if there are any issues which we can find. Generally, the testing used to be called as the static testing. Given that we have got a fundamental basic understanding of what is software testing all about in our chapter one, now you should be able to relate that what exactly we are talking about. Once the requirement phase was complete and found that the requirements are complete in all the manners, we used to close that particular phase and migrate or move to the next phase, which is design. At this phase, the architects, designers, were responsible for start creating the architecture for the product. Now, of course, there was no point that you should go back to the previous stage in order to modify any requirement and that was not a provision at all. So designers or architects used to start defining the architecture of the application or the product. Now the architecture includes the high level design and low level design which are used for different testing levels. Once the design was completed, the stage was again called off to move into the next level which is the development phase. Now as a part of the development phase, the developers used to start implementing the code in order to implement the product and push them simultaneously to the testing team. As these two stages were like development and testing were in parallel, it always used to have defects reported by the testing team which was reported back to the developer. To a certain extent it is also being understood that development used to complete and then testing used to kick off for a particular level or maybe at particular level like unit integration and system. But most often the defects were reported so development used to be a continuous activity. But point is the development team was responsible for creating the product and delivering it to the testing team to do the validation or testing of the dynamic application. Once the testing used to complete for several levels which we have understood as a part of the test process in our chapter one, we used to deploy that to the real time environment, which is more of like releasing the product to the market. During the release, of course, you will have a lot of other things to be taken into account. For example, once a product is released into the market, it's not that this is the final version of it. You have a lot of other updates, upgrades, migrations and retirement as a journey of the product once it is released. And that's where the last phase takes care of it, which is called as maintenance. Maintenance deals with adding enhancements to the existing live application. A separate team within your organization will be responsible for maintaining the product in terms of updating, upgrading it to a different version, migrating it from any platform to another platform, 
or at any point when you think you are done adding all the enhancements and it's time for you to come up with a new product, you retire the product and look for a new development altogether. Now putting up all together, Waterfall was a very simple, very systematic, sequential type of development model and was having a lot of other challenges which we overcame using Agile. We'll be looking into the Agile in our upcoming tutorials, but for today, we're just talking about the waterfall. Now, we will look into the next model, V model, in our next tutorial. Let's understand that in the next tutorial, and then we'll compare the traditional versus the Agile to understand how come Agile is more interesting and different than the altogether traditional models. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.